Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and a very warm welcome to my new subscribers. It's really lovely having you along and thank you so much um, for subscribing to my channel. Um, I was asked by one of my recent um, subscribers if I could show how I make the covers to my mini trifold journals. Um, she wanted to have a go at making one of these journals herself um, and asked me if I could show her or go through um, with her and anybody else who's interested in um, the process for making the covers. But can I say before we start, a word of warning, Christine, these journals are so addictive. So you make one, be warned, you'll be making them for months and months and months. Trust me. <laughs> no, please do have a go. They're very ultra easy. So please have a go. And as you can see, I've just finished the text block for this um, bird themed mini journal. So it's really a good time to do a quick tutorial on how I make the covers. Um, so let's get started, but just very, very, very quickly before we do, um, a shout out to Jessica Rapp of Two Silver Oranges, as the um, cover design was Jessica's. She did it for one of her monthly minis, and I wrote to her and said, would you mind me um, making some of the journal covers for some mini trifold journal um, that I want to make and Jessica being the lovely lady uh, that she is said go for your life so a huge shout out and thank you to Jessica once again if you don't know Jessica two silver oranges she does some lovely journal work uh, amazing tutorials and I'll put her link in the description box down below <coughs> excuse me so let's get started um, I make the covers for the little mini trifold journals from these cradles in my filing cabinet. Um, they don't have to be new ones by any means. So long as they're not ripped or too badly um, creased, they, these are absolutely perfect. You can make them from file folders, you can make them from cardboard. The only thing I would say that with cardboard as in packaging cereal packets just be mindful that the cardboard might not be strong enough you want something that's fairly robust if you follow me um, and do as I do then you'll see that I collage um, all on the outside cover of the um, covers um, and I also like to line inside with um, some more cardstock or paper so it does make them um, pretty robust but I'm not sure how robust um, cereal packet cardboard would be. But as I say, these cradles in filing cabinets or file folders are absolutely brilliant. So what I do with mine um, is I obviously chop off the metal top and inside my file folders, um, sorry, my um, file cradles have this reinforced strip along the bottom now I chop that off um, and that leaves you with two pieces that are this size okay now what you want to do now is using that piece of um, your file folder you want to cut out a piece from the file folder that is 31 centimeters in width by 20 centimeters in height. Now, just one thing to mention, if you can see on this one, you have these little um, uh, indents or they're slight cuts, but they actually don't go through onto the other side. Now, I don't know if this, if this is the same on all um, filing cabinet cradles, but it certainly is on these crystal file classics. So what I try to do is I try to get my 31 centimeter by 20 centimeter rectangle out of um, the side of my cradle, avoiding these lines here or these these light little cuts now it's not absolutely critical that you avoid them I just prefer to avoid them if I can and certainly prefer 
if I do need to um, cut them out and they are forming part of my cover to make sure that they're not near the edge. As I say, this will be covered and this will be covered. And as that cut doesn't go all the way through, it's not going to really affect the integrity of your cover. But it's one of maybe my quirks uh, or foibles. I just like to avoid those where possible. OK, so you ha now have your rectangle, as I say, 31 by 20. And what you want to do is you want to score along the bottom five centimetres up from the bottom. So you're doing a score all the way along the bottom length, the long length of your rectangle, five centimetres up from the bottom. OK, you then want to do... A score line from the left hand side that is 10 centimeters okay you then want to do another score line from the left hand side that is 20.5 centimeters which gives you three portions the first is 10 centimeters the second is 10.5 centimeters and the third portion again is 10.5 centimeters OK, so now using your bone, bone folder, reinforce the creases that you have just made. And I will get my bone folder out. You will just reinforce those creases. Make them nice and sharp. OK. And what I tend to do is I just tend to fold it. Once those creases are reinforced, I like to fold it into three and just make sure everything is nicely lined up. So you will have a little bit of an edge there. But you don't need to worry about that because if you remember, they wrap around your text block inside there. OK, so your cover will look like this and we're almost almost finished. The next thing that you do is along the bottom edge where you have this five centimetre crease all along the bottom. You want to take your scissors and you want to use that first 10 centimetre crease and you want to cut from the bottom along that 10 centimetre crease up to meet the five centimeter crease so you're doing that along the lower portion of the crease line okay and then you move along to the 10.5 centimeter crease line and do it again so that you have this okay the next thing that you do and I usually fold in my center portion is you want to cut a small segment off this right hand piece along there. So you're cutting just a segment off to that crease line again. So if I hold that up to the camera, you can see what I've done. I've just snipped that portion out. Okay. And you want to do the same here on the next one along okay so I'm just going to turn that over slightly sorry my cables getting in the way there and you want to do the same on that piece so that it looks like that and you have a V and you want to do the same again on this portion as you can see I've drawn my line in already So your base actually looks like this now. Now what I do now is I tend to just make my fold again and just check whether I have any folding back 
or creasing back on these fold lines. If I have, it means that I haven't made my cut um, sharp enough to this corner and you just want to, sorry, I've made my cut too sharp. So you just want to just trim it a little bit more so that it folds nicely and nothing impedes the, the fold. You might find it happens along these lines or that line. Um, and I'm just checking that one to see if it, that's actually happening. Mm, no, I think it's fine. Okay, so your, your cover will look like this. Okay, now the next thing I do is I will stitch these portions. These are the obviously the pockets. I will stitch them now. Um, and all I do is I run a, a double line of stitching on my sewing machine just along these portions there. I will also, before I adhere these in place, I will also line the inside um, portions. Um, and I tend to cut these, if you remember this was the 10 centimetre one, I cut it f maybe an eighth of an inch shorter than 10 centimetres. And the same with these two, these two were 10.5s. Again, I cut them a smidgen smaller so that the creases are not impeded. The other thing that you might want to do at this stage is if you like to stitch round each of these portions, now is the time to do it before you adhere your pocket flaps in place. Now I don't do that because I like to stitch all the way round. If I flip this over, I like to stitch all the way round the outside of my, um, my covers. So if your preference is to stitch each of these portions, then go for your life, but now's the time to, to do it. <coughs> okay, if you want to adhere these in place, you can just stitch them in place when you put your stitching all the way around the outside of your cover. But what I like to do is I like to use this um, art glitter glue and I like to just put a thin bead of glue and mine's blocked. If anybody can tell me where I can find stainless steel pins from in the UK, I would be so grateful because I usually find the pins or hat pins I use rust. Um, so I'm constantly changing them. Okay, so here I have just put a just a bead of glue along that edge and all I do is just hold it in place like so and let it have 30 seconds to adhere and the same again on the other two I don't put much glue on just enough to hold it in in place because I am going to reinforce these um, pockets with some stitching. So again, just do this one. I've got a little ooze of glue there. That's nothing to worry about. Okay, and that's all I do. I just do those pockets with a little bit of glue. I'm just gonna put the pin back on my glue there like so. So then you have your cover like so. What I normally do then is I normally go onto the back and I do my collaging. Now I'm not going to um, <laughs> get one of those uh, little template dummies and start um, collaging. We've all got our own preference in terms of the papers that we like to use. I like to use the German um, book pages, some Ready Reckoner, um, some French ledger, as, as much uh, variety as I can, can find. Um, but one tip I will give you is my preference is to use this glue and it's Ranger uh, Multimedia Matte. Now you can get it in gloss if you want a nice glossy finish, um, but I like using the matte. 
not only to um, use a, a wide head paintbrush to paint the glue onto my cover and then put my papers on top. I absolutely slather this um, in multimedia matte because it acts like a sealant as well. And I tend to put two, maybe even three coats when I'm doing this. So um, it's very good. It holds it all in place beautifully. It doesn't make your papers wrinkle too much. I don't get much problem with at all with cracking. But what I do find is when I have um, done my collage on, on top, I will just leave my covers standing up like that um, overnight and let them dry out. Um, and then the following day, I'll put another coat on top of, of this. So it acts as a really, really good sealant. I also use it inside here, especially around my edges before I actually machine stitch. So once I've collaged, let it dry for um, a good few hours. As I say, I leave mine overnight. What I will then do the next day is I will stitch all the way round the outside of my cover and by doing that I also stitch across where my pockets have been adhered. Um, I've got a, a little edge there, I have to chip that off and this is when I do my inking and I tend to use, because I like fairly light inking, I use the Ranger Distress Oxide in the vintage photo now you might want to use walnut stain um, if you like um, a heavier distress look but I quite like the, um, the vintage photo so the last thing that I tend to do um, once I've done my stitching all the way around oh what I should mention is what I tend to do is I will stitch my cover um, on this side and then I will turn it over and I will stitch it again on this side and the reason I do that is because I like a double line of stitching but it also gives a nice finish on both sides of my cover and also by um, inking your stitches as well it makes it blend in um, and gives a nicer finish. I also, after I've stitched, tend to run over my stitches with my bone folder and it flattens down any little um, pieces of paper that tend to come up, um, usually on the reverse side as I'm stitching um, and it's brought up by my needle. So that's one thing I, I always tend to do whenever I do any stitching. Um, as soon as I take it off the machine, on both sides, I tend to just smooth over the stitching with a bone folder um, and then ink the edges afterwards and it gives a, a nice uh, finished edge to my stitching. So this cover is practically done but I like to decorate and collage the inside pockets as well um, and as you can see I haven't done it on this one as yet um, but that is what I will do next and also what I like to do when it's all stitched, when it's all dry, and I know exactly how my cover is, is looking, then I will take some fussy cut images and just test them out on my cover and see where I want them to be. Now, I wouldn't put this image on the front there because it's covering up that M, but I like the way it wraps round, so I quite often um, choose images that will wrap round. Um, this is quite a nice image of a bird. As I say, this is a bird theme, themed journal. So I would probably use that image on the front. And again, I will use this range of matte medium. I will put the um, matte medium down on my cover. I will also then put it on here, put it down, and then I'll just manipulate it with my fingers to get it to soften and um, work the glue into the cover and the um, the image that I want to glue down. Um, it's really forgiving. You probably can't even tell that there are three coats 
of matte medium on this cover already. Um, as I say, if you use the gloss, then you will get a glossy finish, like a magazine finish. But if you use the matte, you will get a lovely finish uh, like this. So I would probably choose maybe that item. Um, that might be another nice one to, to go on the back so that it goes up the front there. Um, I might use this one as well. Might be overkill, I probably won't use that one. So I would just use my Ranger Matte Medium and glue those in place. And as I say, I will just do some collaging inside on my pockets to complement my text block. And then the very last thing that I will do is I will just put an eyelet in the centre of the cover there after I've stitched my text block down this spine or down this 10 centimetre crease. So that will go in there like so and I will stitch that in. And then this cover just wraps round and as you can see you've got a sharp crease there but just working it slightly once the text block is in place will get that to curve quite nicely around your text text blocks once it's in place and then that will be my cover on there like so and as I say the last very last thing I do will be to use my cropper dial put an eyelet in the cover there and thread through some sari silk and wrap it round and tie it in a bow <coughs> as I say this crease down here will soften and because this stuff is so good it's really forgiving it will let you gently manipulate that round your text block and the more you keep wrapping it round the better it it will go and soften up so I hope that is what you need Christine and will help you um, make your own cover um, and make your your journal um, what else can I help you with um, as I say this is my text block um, now I tend to find my little journals are quite chunky um, and I'm just going to do a quick count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen there's sixteen pages in here um so if you don't want yours as chunky then obviously use less in your signature than I have um, maybe 12 pages but if you like it fairly chunky and a good size like I do um, then you might want to go uh, up to 16 pages um, but what I do have to warn you is that um, as I say mine tend to work out a little bit um, chubby chunky monkeys um, once I've put in my um, embellishments my journaling cards and um, my tags and my envelopes so you just want to perhaps bear that in mind okay I hope you could follow that if you have any questions or queries please just um, leave them in the comment box down below or email me and I'll help you as, as best I can but if you did manage to follow that as I say this um, they are super easy these little um, journals the covers are super easy you don't even have to do the pockets inside if you don't want to do that um, so in which case you'd just be cutting a, a piece of card 31 by 15 centimeters um, and forget your pockets along the bottom um, so please I hope you'll give it a go and um, thank you so much everybody as always for watching and um, welcome again to my new subscribers and um, have a lovely day all take care I love you bye bye now